Hello everyone and welcome to this third section in the uh, data analysis part of our course and uh, today we're going to be looking at some uh, regions and backgrounds and, and how we apply some of the fu fundamentals and theory that we learned about in the first part of this course uh, and apply them to data analysis, data modeling uh, and how we model the backgrounds in our spectra to produce correct peak models. So if you need a bit of a refresher on the fundamental and theory behind peak, uh, backgrounds, XPS backgrounds, where that comes from, uh, then do go back and check out the earlier video in the fundamentals course. There will be a link below in Guru and uh, get yourself nice and refreshed to come back. If you're already happy, brilliant, um, we, can, we can crack on and get started. So we're just going to be looking at a nice easy example. So I'm just going to open up a, a nickel nitrate spectrum and uh, we're just going to go through the processes of how we get started so as we covered in the first part of this data analysis course I'm just going to open up the library so that's F10 or library and we're just going to load up our Keratos library so this is the correct library for this data obviously you always need to check which library file you need every time uh, and so I've got the correct one loaded up now uh, and I'm just going to start on a nice and easy one uh, so this is the carbon uh, as you'll remember from the previous um, the previous part we, where we talked about calibration this is just the adventitious carbon even though there's no carbon in nickel nitrate um, we do still see this so what I'm going to do is open up quantification parameters so that's up here you can press F7 or you can click on uh, quantify up here and that'll open up this dialog box and the first thing we've got is a tab called regions so what we can do with this is uh, create a region of analysis so this is just an area of interest and uh, and everything we do and model is going to be done in between these limits so I'm just going to click on create and that's going to bring this green box up here you possibly you might not see it in green it might be transparent in which case you can come up to the top um, toolbar here if we just click on the, uh, the spectrum side to bring up these options I'm just going to toggle regions on and off so you can see uh, this is if it's not colored and you'd like it colored it's a little easier to see it when it is colored and um, you can just toggle that on and off here so we've got three things to look at straight away We've got our upper and lower limits, and then we've got a line running through the middle. That just marks out the, the peak maxima. It's not a particularly um, useful marking for most things, because if you, as soon as you've got some signal to noise, um, some noise in your signal, sorry, such as here, um, it's not actually going to be marking out the peak maxima. So you don't really need to pay too much attention to that, but that's what that line is. And then we've got these two things either side where we can drag and drop and uh, and move our region of analysis around. So the very first thing we need to do is put this in a sensible place. So we want to be um, either side of our peak. So we've, we've got all of the kind of signal of interest within this green box. Um, but we also just want to be careful that our background is going through the the kind of noise, the signal noise down here. So for example, if we move this too far, we've got this increased background because of the inelastic scatter as, as discussed in the fundamental section. So this background is rising. So if we push this too far to higher binding energies, what we can see is this simulated background is now above our, our actual data. So this isn't good. This is obviously a not a very good way to describe our data. So we just need to be careful that we are not only incorporating all of the signal from from these peaks um, but that we're also not going too far uh, and moving our background above the uh, the actual spectrum itself so once you've got something like this where you've got you know a few EV either side of the peak you've got a nice a nice area drawn there and everything's incorporated uh, this is this is our background so this is um, this blue line is the background that we've applied and this is our area of integration so this will be important for when we do quantifications later on um, that we've got all of our signal incorporated so we're just going to go through what these options are in the regions 
and uh, and make sure that we're, we're happy with everything first one nice and simple uh, this is just the name so by default this will be whatever the um, the region of analysis is so these VAMAS blocks up here are labeled with the the element and the orbital so this will be the default for the name in here we can call this whatever we want so if we're putting in multiple regions of analysis um, on a single spectrum we can give them unique identifiers you can call this whatever you want and similarly if we do have a case where we've got multiple elements in the same spectrum so for example um, ruthenium overlaps with carbon so if, if we were if we wanted to put in multiple regions here name one of them ruthenium we can do that uh, as well now the second box this is the relative sensitivity factor so this converts the integrated area into a, an elemental concentration uh, and this will touch on this a bit more in the quantification part of this uh, this course um, but it's, it's very important that this uh, is the correct value otherwise you won't be able to reliably quantify your data and this is what we're loading up when we load those libraries in the in the element library that we did to begin with and uh, if you want to check that this is correct so you've loaded your library if you give this a name of the element that you're looking at so for example if we knew that we had some ethenium here and we wanted to draw a region come into the rsf hit hash and hit enter and that will load up the sensitivity factor for this orbital from the library file that you've loaded now we know in this case we don't have ruthenium we've only got carbon so we don't need to change the name and we can again use the hash key to just load up the correct sensitivity factor so next we've got the start and the end so this is just where we're drawing our, our limits here you can put these in manually as well if you wanted to do uh, an area between 291 278 you can there's no real advantage to doing it that way uh, it's easier to just drag and drop but if that's how you want to do it uh, then you are more than welcome to do so so next up we've got the background type so we did cover these in the fundamentals part so again if you need a bit of a refresh uh, then go and check those out but there's a few ways that we can look at these and change these so to start with we can just type in a new background so we want to put a linear in we can type linear and hit enter and that will change this background type here I mean there's not much difference at the moment because we've not got a huge energy gap between um, before and after the peak um, so the linear and the Shirley backgrounds do look quite similar um, but that's one way we can change it we can just type in linear there are some shortcuts so if you just type S and hit enter it will load up a Shirley same as if you type L that will give you a linear we're gonna stick with Shirley as we mentioned before this is just uh, it's the best background really to, to choose overall for particularly for beginners um, because it's a lot easier to work with and you're, you're less likely to make make mistakes and errors um, with your with your data analysis so I'm gonna stick with Shirley but if we want to look at all the backgrounds available if we hit uh, sorry if you hold control and click on where the background type is here this will load up a menu where a lot of the default backgrounds or and a lot of advanced backgrounds are uh, in there for, you, for your perusal so if we go down we can see some very specific backgrounds so for example bilinear background is is very good for um, looking at intersections uh, if we go we've got step up and step down so these are very good for looking at um, so energy cutoff so for example the Fermi energy there's different backgrounds to do a lot of different things and a lot of them almost all of them you probably won't ever use uh, because they fulfill specific functions so maybe you will come across them in some of the advanced courses we will run in the future uh, but for now we're just going to stick to linear and Shirley as I mentioned in the fundamentals um, part of this course two guard backgrounds are excellent as well very strong theoretical backgrounds and the only issue is applying them correctly can not be the easiest thing for beginners which is why we don't tend to advise on using them at this point in your learning to process XPS data uh, and you can see in the menu there's a few specific examples for example silicon silica this is where uh, all the 
the properties of those two verb backgrounds are already known and so you can just apply those to data um, but it goes to show that these are quite fiddly backgrounds to work with or they can be quite fiddly backgrounds to work with so they're not necessarily the things you can just chuck in and start processing um, so again we will we will come on to those in the future um, but for now we'll stick with Shirley so average width this is another useful tool um, if we change this to one it might be one by default uh, what we can see is when we move our limits then our background is is heavily influenced by the peaks and the troughs of the noise if we increase this to say five uh, we're now taking an average of five data points so when we then move our limits uh, we're getting a much smoother a much smoother uh, movement of the background through the noise uh, and we do want to make sure that this background is kind of going through the center of this noise um, so if you have a, a slightly increased average width then that makes it a little bit easier to just fit this background through the data rather than be affected by the peaks and the troughs. Uh, we can put offsets in our background so for example if you put an offset of 10 uh, this isn't probably not the easiest one to look at so I'm just going to move to nickel where we've got a bit of a larger jump in terms of the energy step so if we put in a, an offset now we can see uh, we've we've now on the end of our spectrum we've, we've got an offset in that background and you can do the same for the, the start as well so this can be a bit of a niche application it can be very good when you've got uh, overlapping data and and difficulties in applying a background because of uh, competing peaks however for the vast majority of, of applications again um, certainly when you're at this kind of beginner stage uh, we probably won't be looking at applying these too much um, so carrying on cross-section is not important for Shirley background so we can just leave this tag it is for some of the more advanced um, calculation processes in CASA which again we'll probably cover in an advanced course and leave for now and then we've got some some readouts here so our peak area uh, full half maximum isn't necessarily too useful if you've got more than one peak uh, if you're looking at something like the oxygen here we can put in a new region and it will read out a full half maximum um, but when there's more than one we don't generally tend to look at it because uh, it's it's much more accurate to do this with the actual peak modeling which is what we're going to come on to next um, if we are to look at multiple regions so one thing you'll notice looking at the nickel here in fact if we just delete this is if we try and put a Shirley region across this whole spectrum uh, you can see we we intersect this data so there are occasions where you will probably want to look at using more than one background to describe your region of interest uh, and in this case if we wanted to look at the percentage concentration of the um, so in this case this is the nickel 2p3 over 2 and the nickel 2p1 over 2 uh, if we look at those percentage concentrations you can see that's roughly uh, 2 to 1 so we know that we're in the right ballpark in terms of quantification based on what we know from the spin orbit coupling of, uh, of 2p orbitals so that is a, a an introduction to applying regions to your data um, so this is just giving us a good way to, to model this background and give us a basis for uh, applying peak models applying components which is what we're going to come on to now one thing of note if you are using peak models um, particularly those developed by somebody else uh, so this is often quite um, relevant if you're looking at first world transition metals such as nickel 2p where you've got these complex structures you might want to use some of the work for example developed by Mark Biesinger who's developed a lot of peak models and peak fits for complex multiplets in the first row transition metals you will need to just be careful that you're matching the backgrounds a background of uh, Shirley is going to pr produce a peak model which isn't necessarily compatible with those of say two guard or linear for example so uh, so do you know, do be careful and make sure that you are aware of which backgrounds you're using and why you're using them and I say we would primarily suggest at the beginning stage at least sticking to, to Shirley backgrounds um, and 
and if nothing else being consistent across your data uh, so for example here we've got lots of elements of, of interest and we're just going to make sure that we've applied shady backgrounds to everything uh, just again consistency it will introduce fewer errors and um, particularly at this stage of your journey into learning XPS 15 so there's some example uh, data sets on the associated guru page for this so if you are watching on YouTube check out the link in the description head over to guru and you can download some example data sets uh, to get playing and get practicing uh, there's no there's no better way to learn than, than by practicing and just fitting different backgrounds to different things make sure you're happy and then we can move on to the next section so we will see you in the next section which is applying components and peak models and building on what we've learned in this section so thank you